the, the gift of tongues. That as the Spirit of God prays through us, that he is praying us for us according to God's will. And we don't even know what it's saying. That is one of the great benefits. It's a great gift. And it's nothing that we need to be afraid of, like, ooh, that's getting kind of weird on us. But it, it really is scriptural, what Paul is talking about. And so I, I just encourage any of you that uh, would be open at the end of service that you would come forward and just be prayed for that God would give you this great spiritual gift. Now, so let's be real. Let's, let's allow the Holy Spirit to allow these emotions to come up and to be authentic and genuine with each other. I think that's what grows emotionally healthy people. Emotionally healthy people can be used more powerfully by God, and emotionally healthy people develop an emotionally healthy church, and an emotionally healthy church has greater impact on the world because the world doesn't look at us like, you guys are just frankly weird, but they see us as authentic people. That's what we need, isn't it? Yeah. Turn your neighbor and say, we need that, so I can get a drink. So if you're in that moment of pain and distress right now, it's really important that we grab hold of this truth is God's there, God is there with you. That he, as his presence comes, is where deep hope comes from. One of my favorite verses that, that has been with me ever since I was a young man is Isaiah 41.10. And it says, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And there are those moments, friends, that the only thing that's holding us up, quite frankly, is the right hand of God. Because we are out of all energy, all emotional strength, and the only thing that's holding us and keeping us breathing is the grace of God. Some of you are right there right now. This is your world, and my heart goes out to you, but God is with you. And so what do we hope on to is the character of God. We hold on to his sovereignty, and we hold on to his glory that will be revealed through us. In verse 28, it says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. No matter what's going on here, this is the one thing Jane and I have been talking about lately is, is we know that God is up to something. We don't know what yet, but we know without a doubt God's up to something right now in our lives. And he says, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And, and one of the things that we kind of don't like to hear a lot of times when we're struggling is, well, God's just creating you, conforming you to God's likeness, to his son. And you go, you just shut up. I don't want to hear that. Because it hurts. It's painful, doesn't it? But somewhere down the road, we see that something's changed in us, that God's done something in our character and something in our heart. That's what the Holy Spirit is doing, is he's using suffering, he's using pain to strengthen us, to give us fortitude, and to give us hope, and to give us life so we can pass it on to others. And then he says, And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. The main thing, because we're not going to get into all these theological terms this week. We're going to try to do it next week. Whew. But is the, the reality is that my life is the way it is, and, and my future hope that I have of the great uh, being glorified in God's kingdom is not because of me. It's because of what God has done through Jesus on the cross, and it's what God has, how he has positionally changed me from being a sinner to a saint, and how God holds on to me, and he's never going to let me go. You see, that just brings incredible hope to me because, you know, quite frankly, you guys are getting this. I'm a knucklehead. I mean, I blow it so many times. I lose my faith every day, it seems like. And the thing keeps bringing me back is I know that God's hand is on me. 
and he's never going to let me go. For those of you that have wayward prodigal children, that they're just off on this course and, and they're, they just aren't doing anything that you raised them up to be, God's hand is not going to let go of them. And like the prodigal father, he's waiting for them, and when, he, when they return to him, he's going to wrap them up in his arms and he's going to love them and throw a party for them because of God's goodness and his grace. And that gives us hope, doesn't it? Incredible hope that God is in control, that even when all heck is breaking loose, God is there. He's in the midst of it. The Holy Spirit's praying for you as you're struggling with it, and he will bring the situation to glory somehow, someday. And God is working his purposes. God is up to something. So let's have the worship team come up. And so, where does hope come from? Hope comes from knowing who God is and knowing that he will never leave us or forsake us or abandon us. He will never reject us, even though we reject him. Hope comes when we know in our hearts that, that God is up to something in this situation. He has never lost control of your world. Even in the midst where it seems like everything's spinning out of control, God's in the middle of it, and he is going to bring his glory into that situation. Hope comes that no matter what happens, God is moving the pieces of your life together, and he's creating this beautiful tapestry of a collage of all these pictures of your life, and he's going to create something of beauty that's going to bring glory to him. That's what God's in the business of doing. And that's where we find hope. And hope comes in knowing that our suffering and our pain that we are in is that we are never alone. That the Holy Spirit is right there with you. And he will bring you exactly what you need as you continue to invite him in. And even when you don't have the words to express what you need, the Holy Spirit's right there and he's interceding for you that God's purposes and his will will be accomplished in your situation. Amen. Friends, that's an amazing thing to think about, isn't it? It's incredible. And hope comes in knowing that he had everyone in this room in mind before creation began. And his desire is for you to know him and as you know him and you have faith in his son, Jesus Christ, he puts a death grip on you. And he says, now you are mine. And nothing is going to take you away from my love. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're in his grip. <coughs> so that is a God, I believe, that is worth worshiping. I believe a God that loves us and calls us to be his own and that he will one day lift us up before all creation and say, look at my children to bring glory to him. That's a God worth worshiping, isn't it? I believe that a God that never leaves us and never forsakes us is a God worth worshiping, that he is a God of love, a God of grace, and a God that gives us a future hope and a glory. We gotta worship this God and we gotta worship him even when your pain is to the point that you can't keep going, keep worshiping him because you know that his presence is with you. He's interceding for you through the Holy Spirit, and he is going to bring his glory into the situation no matter what's going on right now or what will come in the future. God is in control, and God is all about bringing glory to himself through us. So let's stand and let's worship this God. God, you remain. You sing. Higher than the mountains that I face. Stronger than the power of the grave Constant in the trial and the change 
this one thing remains. Let's sing that again. Verse 1. Higher than the mountains that I face. Stronger than the power of the grave. Be constant in the trial and the change. And this one thing remains. One thing. This one thing remains. We sing your love never fails. Because your love never fails. It never gives up. Never runs. Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love. And on and on it goes. Because on and on and on and on it goes. For me. Grab hold of that hope that comes in knowing that his love never fails us. And we're going to have the ministry team come forward. And I just really encourage you, if, if you would like to be prayed for, for this wonderful gift of praying in the Spirit, that, uh, that you come for, forward and have these guys pray for you and experience the, the wonderful gift that it is. And there are others that you are in a situation right now that, you are desperate for God to step into it and give you some sense of hope. 
And so I ask you to consider coming forward that if there's ever time you need that prayer, maybe right now. So God bless you as you go from here, friends. Continue to demonstrate this hope to a world in deep need of a bone from God. So God bless you as you go from here, guys. Have a great weekend. Love you guys.